Hi, welcome to the recap room. In today's video, we'll be talking about a 2021 war adventure film called Sniper the White Raven. Warning, spoilers ahead, watch at your own risk. The movie begins with Mikola Voronenko, a mathematician, physicist, and ecologist, saying goodbye to his pregnant wife, Nastya, as he lived through work on a bicycle. After riding for a while, Mikola parks his bike and goes to the school he's teaching at. Inside, he can see from the news that special forces kill a hundred protesters in Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. He also finds out that their president fled to Russia, as Russia is on the verge of invading Ukraine. While teaching physics, Mikola does his best to share his knowledge and educate his students. However, one student named Ivan displays no sign of interest in learning. When Ivan disturbs the class with his antics, Mikola gives him a rather simple equation to solve on the board. However, he keeps antagonizing the teacher every chance he gets. When the class ends, Ivan approaches the teacher and tells him to get out, as he is a stranger there. In the next scene, we see Mikola and his wife Nastya being interviewed by a reporter. The reporter reveals that they live in a very peaceful area in Ukraine's Donbass region, a two-hectare land. They are considered the first eco-settlers in the area. By the end of the interview, the reporter starts believing that the couple is wasting their lives living in such primitive conditions. On another regular bike ride to work, Mikola comes across armed Russian men near his land. He does not think much of it and proceeds to report for work. As usual, he parks his bike and gets inside the school. He is surprised that the place is empty and he is the only teacher there. Mikola can see from the news that chaos is brewing as Russian forces continue to invade the neighboring areas. Immediately, he grabs his bike and heads back home. The thought of his wife being alone and the thought of armed men he saw earlier bothers him. Turns out, he's not wrong. As he nears his house, he can see his wife being beaten by the armed Russian soldiers. Quickly, he rushes to help her but ends up getting hit with the back of a gun. He begs them to stop hurting her, as she's pregnant, but they refuse to listen. Eventually, one of the Russian soldiers goes inside their house and burns it down to ashes. When the two Russians are about to leave, Nastya grabs a stone to retaliate. However, she's eventually gunned down, and she dies right in front of Mikola. Heartbroken, Mikola gathers all the strength to hold her in his arms, but it's already too late. The next day, two Ukrainian members of the Ukrainian militia help Mikola dig a grave for his wife. While he returns to their burnt house, with eyes full of tears, he retrieves the wooden crucifix his wife made for him. Soon after, Mikola buries his wife with a broken heart and decides to go with the Ukrainians, uncertain of what's next for him. Mikola then joins the Ukrainian militia on their way to their camp. However, the leader does not trust him, thinking that he can be a Russian spy. Still, he expresses his intention to join them and drive the Russians out of their country. He is then given the chance to train with them, but being a pacifist, he has little knowledge about guns and is having a hard time with the training. Later, a woman shows him how to disassemble and assemble a gun, while Mikola shows his strong determination to learn. One night, while doing some physical conditioning, Mikola assures his officer that he's no longer a pacifist. He also prefers the codename The Raven but he is reminded that codenames are earned, not just given. The training is new and challenging for him, but Mikola is committed to equipping himself with all the knowledge and skills to avenge his wife's death. On regular training day, the trainees are informed that there are not enough snipers at the front. As a result, they need volunteers to be trained, but only a few of them show interest. Among them, Mikola stands up and expresses his desire to step up to the challenge. However, the officer asks him to sit down as he can't even assemble a gun in time. But this doesn't stop Mikola. He says that he wants a chance to prove that he can be worthy. Also, he assures the officer that he can finish it in 20 seconds, which surprises everyone. Then, an AK-47 is laid on the table by the officer. To everyone's surprise, Mikola blindfolds himself and starts to disassemble the gun. He immediately assembles the parts back smoothly. All of this is accomplished by Mikola in just 18 seconds. Instead of laughter, he gains applause all over the place this time, and Mikola is now admitted to being trained as a sniper. During training, 
Nicola is surprised to receive a different gun from the rest of the trainees. He refuses to leave, as he finds it unfair not to get the same weapon. He demands to also get an SVD-63, a semi-automatic designated marksman rifle. The same rifle that the other trainees get. However, this not sit well with the personnel in charge, who screams at him to get away from there. As a result, Mikola has no other choice than to settle with what he has. During training sessions, the trainees are told to remain invisible under any circumstances. Part of the test is for the trainer to shoot a few inches from them. If they react to the shot, they will fail. Most trainees fail the test, but Mikola does not even flinch despite the loud noise and the risk involved in this training. Another test is for their scope to be covered once the target is sighted. Unfortunately, Mikola misses this time. Even though he does not have the best weapon, Mikola does not use it as an excuse. Next, when the training focuses on computation, Mikola impresses the lieutenant colonel as he can calculate the answer before his fellow trainees can. His being a mathematician comes in handy and Mikola passes the sniper's training. One day, Mikola is told by the lieutenant colonel to pack his things. He is informed that he, along with his team, is being sent to a checkpoint that has been captured by the Russians. Soon enough, the team immediately secures its position. Each sniper has its own target. However, when they are about to execute their plan, a car heads towards the checkpoint. Hence, the lieutenant colonel is forced to stop them from shooting. Later, we see that the couple in the car are asked to come out of the car and present their passports. Once cleared, they are allowed to leave, but the Russians kept the man's passport. When the guy asked for his passport back, the Russians who took it refused to hand it back to him. This results in a commotion where the girl is slapped and the guy gets shot with a gun. Following the incident, the lieutenant colonel gives them a go signal to shoot. In a short period, all the Russians are killed and the lieutenant colonel congratulates the team on their first successful mission. When they return back to the command post, Mikola looks for his friends and fellow trainees. He's told that they are on a separate mission, but later on, he finds out that one of them is brutally killed by a sniper. One day, the team is sent on a mission again. Explosives are set up, and the trigger is concealed with a leaf. When the Russians are getting closer, Mikola is surprised to see his former student with them. Ivan, the student who was always antagonizing him, was on the other side. Eventually, all the Russians are killed when the explosives are detonated, including Ivan. But the lieutenant colonel tells Mikola to not feel bad as Ivan made his decision. Later that night, while resting, the lieutenant colonel grabs a photo of his family. Mikola asks if he can take a look at it and the officer allows him. The officer reveals to him that his two daughters don't know the nature of his job. He has an agreement with his wife to keep his job among themselves. What they know is that he is on a business trip. In the meantime, the colonel sees the wooden crucifix that his wife gave to him and asks if it's an amulet. Mikola simply tells him that it symbolizes family to him. In the next scene, Ukrainian forces secure the trenches by the border while the snipers are in position. It's just a matter of time before Russian forces will pass on. Meanwhile, the Russians are preparing to invade the region. As the Ukrainians are holding their positions, Mikola sees the man who killed his wife from his scope. He asks for permission from the lieutenant colonel to shoot, but he's told to stand down. Mikola asks for permission once again, claiming he has a perfect shot. But the request is once again turned down. However, Mikola can't afford to miss this opportunity when his wife's killer is right in front of him. He squeezes the trigger and hits the Russian in the neck, ultimately killing him. But the officer is disappointed that his order was ignored. Without their knowledge, a Russian elite sniper named Seti is also in a position to spot their location. At the same time, the lieutenant colonel also spots Seri. He quickly tells Mikola where the sniper location is, but the Russian sniper is faster than Mikola and shoots the officer dead. Now, Mikola knows that their location is compromised. He puts the officer's dead body on his back as he braves the onslaught of the Russians. He finds a trench and takes cover for safety. Finally, he manages to make it out alive, but the officer is not as lucky. 
he feels a tremendous amount of guilt for the death of the officer who always believed in him and who gave him the chance to serve. His emotions got the better of him when he went for the kill despite being repeatedly ordered not to. Now, the only way for Mikola to avenge his death is to trace the sniper who killed him. As a result, Mikola goes on a mission alone. Soon, he spots two snipers and eliminates them, but not without getting hit in the arm. While resting, Mikola receives a call from the Brigadier General and informs him about the Russian sniper. But he can give the details for now. He wants to fill Mikola in once they meet, so Mikola packs his gear and heads toward the location. This is his opportunity to know more about the Russian sniper. The Brigadier General informs his men what the Russian sniper is capable of doing. He has already eliminated five of their snipers and three machine gunners. He is a force to be reckoned with. On the bright side, as the Russian sniper doesn't change his location, the Ukrainians have an idea of where he normally operates from. One Ukrainian soldier suggests covering the area with mines, but the officer is opposed to the idea. He lets Mikola explain the reason why they can't just do that since he is from that area. Mikola explains that there is chlorine storage in the location where the sniper is hiding, and using explosives to kill him can cause an environmental issue. All of the snipers are then giving their assignments. The officer makes it clear that once the secondary targets are eliminated, he wants Mikola to climb up the building and kill the Russian sniper. Soon, all the snipers are in position to attack. Mikola confirms that he is now in position after crawling toward the target area. He manages to sneak up behind two Russians and immediately kills them both. One of the two was the same person who went to his place and killed his wife. Meanwhile, the other snipers lock their subjects and wait for the go signal. They then manages to wipe out their targets after doing a countdown to shoot at the same time. Seti notices that his lookouts are not reporting back anymore, so he leaves his post to check what's going on outside. Another Russian sniper also leaves his post to investigate as there seems to be an issue with their communication. However, they do not know that Mikola is closing in and just waiting for that perfect moment to shoot and kill them both. Meanwhile, Seti checks one of the snipers outside, but the sniper appears to be still in position. Seti is surprised to find out that the sniper has been shot dead and calls for a backup. He is then told to wait for 10 minutes for the team to arrive. So Seti goes back to his position and fixates his eye back on his scope. Shortly after, he notices a wooden crucifix near him. But before he can react, Mikola jumps on his back and stabs him in the neck. The other sniper also goes back to his post. When he does, a grenade is detonated and he is killed as well. As the movie runs down its final few minutes, the backup that Seri was anticipating arrives at the location. A Russian officer calls Seri on the radio, but Mikola answers the call and tells him that they will answer for what they did to Crimea, another territory that the Russians invaded. Mikola then kills him. Russian soldiers come out of the trucks, but they are no match against the Ukrainian snipers who are well positioned to finish all of them. When the smoke clears, Mikola goes back to his place and visits the grave of his wife. While his mission to avenge her death is completed, the job is not done yet, as we see Mikola on yet another mission. And that's the end of the video. For more movie recaps like this, make sure to like and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell as well so that you won't miss any of our uploads. Thank you for watching.